Good morning. Pastor Sean here. Uh, today is Thursday, March 2nd, and this is your morning prayer. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, welcome to day 51 of our journey through the scriptures. Uh, today is Leviticus chapters 22 and 23. And um, we have kind of, 22 is, um, kind of goes along with the previous chapters that we were reading about um, in terms of um, rules and regulations for what um, what makes a person clean or unclean, uh, this time in regards to the priesthood, the priests, and what they're able to um, do in regards to the, the food that they're eating, the holy things. Um, and if, if they, you know, what makes them unclean and when they can or can't handle uh, those things or eat them. So a lot of those details, which as you're reading, you're probably thinking, what, what does this have to do with me? <laughs> and then um, chapter 23 is a um, overview of the various celebrations, uh, festivals uh, that uh, the people are to keep uh, throughout their generations. So um, you know, things like Passover, the, the Feast of Weeks, the Feast of Booths, stuff like that, the Day of Atonement. So, um, which again does not apply to us because we we do not uh, celebrate these um, these festivals. Um, they are a part of this old covenant that that we are not um, beholden to, and um, yeah. So, what do we make of these? Now, I'm not really going to address chapter 22 because we sort of have been talking about that. Uh, 23 is interesting because, um, I mean, in almost universally, you know, Christians, we, we don't, we don't observe any of these. I mean, other than, you know, keeping a Sabbath day, but, uh, certainly not strictly on, um, on the Sabbath day that, that the Jews historically had on, on Saturday, you know, ours has moved to Sunday because of, of Easter. But, um, there, there is a an, an interesting, interesting, odd, however you want to call it, um, kind of interest that some Christians have with some of these um, old covenant festivals and feasts, and quite often you'll you'll have a, a church, a Christian church that will have um, celebrate a, a Passover seder, uh, a seder meal, and um, or or will have some commemoration along the lines of, of these, these ancient festivals. And it, it always strikes me as, as odd, um, that they would do that. Uh, partly just because again, it's, it's not, um, this is not a part of our, our covenant. Um, these, you know, just like the, all the other stuff that we've been talking about through, um, Leviticus that, you know, these are part of a civil and ceremonial law that no longer applies to us. Um, so, you know, when, when, when I see something like a, a Christian church holding like a Passover Seder, um, you know, if they go back to some of the other laws and regulations, well, they don't hold to any of those. Um, so why, why are they holding to this one? And I can't say for, for sure why exactly other than a curiosity, a desire to um, maybe be connected with the, the fullness of salvation history and, and the people of Israel, um, you know, as as those chosen by God and and now chosen through Jesus Christ, uh, faith in Christ, um, so that that might be it. But I think um, probably one of the the more direct reasons why we we don't celebrate these things is because everything, all of these festivals, all all, all the stuff that's going on in the Old Testament is is pointing ahead to Christ, is bringing the people of God to Christ. You know, to the time where the Messiah will come, he shall be lifted up on the cross, die and rise again on the third day, ascend into heaven, et cetera, et cetera, right? And so um, it all finds its fulfillment in Jesus Christ. So these festivals, all these, everything um, is just no longer, you know, we have Christ. 
you know, you know, we look at Passover and 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 we look at our the the sacrament of Holy Communion. You know, the unleavened bread that we we use in that because this the Passover meal was being celebrated by Jesus in the Last Supper. Well, this this now becomes our you know the 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 fulfilled version for us of the Passover meal. So when we celebrate communion, that's you know we're getting that um, that 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 fullness there. Um, so the the celebration of of a Passover meal, like it was, just kind of becomes um, well superfluous, I guess, uh, and and just unnecessary, really. So there's there's that. Um, the other thing that I, I kind of wanted to bring out, and it was something that I, I thought about yesterday after yesterday's morning prayer is, um, you know, thinking about why, why we read these things, what, why is it valuable for us to go through Leviticus and read about all these things that don't apply to us. And um, I think part of it is, is, is it's a good exercise in realizing how, um, how we cherry-pick Scripture and how loose we are with, well, this applies and this doesn't. Because, um, you know, a lot of the... You know, some of the more objectionable things to to our society found in Leviticus, I mean, are are just they're they're scandalous, right? Especially when it talks about um, sexual stuff and um, and who who is worthy and the list of like disabilities that that are that make a person unclean or unworthy to approach God. Um, you know, people in today would would look at that and and just be appalled by it. And say, well, this is useless. We we can't even, you know, this doesn't apply to us anyway. Um, so this is useless. We can just throw it out, ignore it completely. But then you look at something where it says, like, okay, when your harvest comes, you know, don't don't pull the whole, full harvest in, but leave a portion of it. Leave a portion of it for the poor um, and for the sojourner that we should look after, the traveler in our land. And something like that comes up, and all of a sudden, um, many people are like, well, that's good. In fact, we should bring that back. <laughs> that that's 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 one of the good ones. We we should pay attention to that. In fact, we would be a better better people, better place, better world if more people observe that. And you know, the the argument would go the same way. Like, well, that's old covenant stuff. No, we're not beholden to that. <laughs> um, and so it's it's an interesting thing just to kind of recognize that in us. Um, that you know, for for every part of scripture that that offends us that we are you know scandalized by there are parts of scripture that we are very much in favor of and and would hold up and say look this is this is good stuff um when we come to scripture how we personally feel about it is not important it doesn't pl- factor into the mix um this is god's word you know certainly we we need to understand it in the context it was given so that we can understand what what he was saying to his people, um, understand the, the differences between, you know, civil law, ceremonial law, moral law, and how these uh, may or may not be binding on us, but then filter it, filtering everything through through that and then um, but get, listening to the word and letting God speak and saying, well, this is his word. I am not in a position to say, well, this is, the, this is a good word and this is a bad word. There, it's all good words in scripture. It's just I'm a bad hearer of those words. I'm a bad receiver of those words because I'm a sinner. Um, so this is the way we often come to Scripture is, you know, well, this is this is old stuff. We don't need to do this. But this one, ooh, this could be fun. Let's do that. <laughs> um, so it, it's, it's a good um, way to remind us of how picky we are and how we shouldn't be. Um, how and even if something is difficult for us, and maybe something that goes against what we um, what we personally hold to, um, if it's God's word, it's God's word, and we have to we have to be willing to say, Amen, you know, and lay down our own personal preferences of what we want Scripture to say, and instead listen to what Scripture actually says, and and live according to that. Um, and it's 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 a challenge sometimes. It, it truly is, um, you know. And and people would always point to the gospels and like, oh, see, Jesus says great stuff. It's like, yeah, he does. But you know, I don't always want to love my enemy. I don't always want to you know forgive so easily. It runs counter to my sinful nature. Um, so it's it's a it is a challenge. So that I think is is part of the usefulness 
of, of reading some of this stuff, knowing that, okay, this is Old Covenant civil ceremonial stuff. That doesn't apply to me whatsoever. But see how the Spirit will use it and be like, oh, I see what I do now. Okay, yeah, my bad. <laughs> so there you go. Let us pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. All right, blessings to you on this Thursday. Hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day, and uh, we'll be back at it tomorrow. So until then, peace be with you.